Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, Donald Trump emerges president-elect of the United States of America, pledges to work with all citizens to make the country great again. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton congratulates U.S. president-elect Donald Trump, asks him to work for all Americans. President Buhari, other world leaders congratulate Donald Trump over his victory. And River State Governor Yesong Wike raises alarm over alleged plan to sweep case of printing of fake INEC materials under the carpet. And on business news tonight, global financial markets reverse early losses after Donald Trump's victory as the Nigerian stock exchange remains in negative territory. On sports news tonight, Confederation of African Football confirms 64% increase in prize money for next winners of Nations Cup. I'm Linda Kibi and from Abuja, Nigerian lawmakers and other government officials react to the victory of Donald Trump as U.S. President-elect. We begin tonight outside the shores of Nigeria in the United States of America, where the citizens today spoke loudly and in clear terms by electing Donald Trump as their 45th president. The president-elect won 289 electoral college votes to defeat his opponents, Mrs. Hillary Clinton of the Democratic Party, who hit 218. In his acceptance speech, Mr. Trump promised to rebuild America, provide jobs for his teeming unemployed, and also work with even the opposition to make America great again. Our correspondent Maria Bird reports from Washington, D.C. Election results are in, and we have a new president-elect, Donald Trump, of the United States of America. This historic election has elected the first U.S. president who has never served within the U.S. government or military. President-elect Donald Trump calls for closing the gap of division in America and has promised to be the president for all Americans. Working together, we will begin the urgent task of rebuilding our nation and renewing the American dream. I've spent my entire life in business looking at the untapped potential in projects and in people all over the world. That is now what I want to do for our country. <laughs> tremendous potential. I've gotten to know our country so well. Tremendous potential. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Every single American will have the opportunity to realize his or her fullest potential. The forgotten men and women of our country will be forgotten no longer. The White House will, for the first time in many years, have the same party be the majority in both the House and Senate, as Republicans have swept Congress as well. The American people have spoken. We have a new president-elect for the United States of America. From Washington, Maria Byrd, Channel Television News. Meanwhile, the U.S. president-elect Donald Trump has promised to double America's economic growth while getting along with any other nation interested in maintaining close ties with his country. He says America has dreams and plans for its greatness and will deal fairly with everyone under his administration. We have a great economic plan. We will double our growth and have the strongest economy anywhere in the world. At the same time, we will get along with all other nations willing to get along with us. We will be. We'll have great relationships. We expect to have great, great relationships. No dream is too big. No challenge is too great. Nothing we want for our future is beyond our reach. I want to tell the world community that while we will always put America's interests first, we will deal fairly with everyone, with everyone all people and all other nations. We will seek common ground, not hostility, partnership, not conflict. 
Meanwhile, defeated Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton has called on her supporters to accept Donald Trump with an open mind. She apologized to supporters for not winning the elections, for the values shared and the vision held for the country. Clinton's address in New York comes hours after she had called Donald Trump to congratulate him on winning the election. She said she hoped that Trump would be a successful president for all Americans. I know how disappointed you feel because I feel it too. And so do tens of millions of Americans who invested their hopes and dreams in this effort. This is painful and it will be for a long time. But I want you to remember this. Our campaign was never about one person or even one election. It was about the country we love and about building an America that's hopeful, inclusive, and big-hearted. We have seen that our nation is more deeply divided than we thought. But I still believe in America, and I always will. And if you do, then we must accept this result and then look to the future. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. And U.S. President Barack Obama did congratulate the president-elect Donald Trump via telephone in the early hours of this morning, saying that though they both had significant differences, they were ultimately on the same team. He hoped that Donald Trump would inculcate the values that cause America to be the most respected country in the world. The country needs a sense of unity, a sense of inclusion, a respect for our institutions, our way of life, rule of law, and a respect for each other. I hope that he maintains that spirit throughout this transition, uh, and I certainly hope that's how his presidency has a chance to begin. So this was a long and hard-fought campaign. A lot of our fellow Americans are exultant today. A lot of Americans are less so. But that's the nature of campaigns. That's the nature of democracy. It is hard and sometimes contentious and noisy. Uh, it's not always inspiring. But to the young people who got into politics for the first time and may be disappointed by the results, I just want you to know you have to stay encouraged. Don't get cynical. Don't ever think you can't make a difference. Strong words there from U.S. President Barack Obama. Now the emergence of Donald Trump as the U.S. President-elect gets another thumbs up. And this time it's coming from Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari, who sees the outcome as a triumph of the will of the people. The president in a statement also says he looks forward to working with Mr. Trump to strengthen the already established friendly relations between both countries on several fronts, including foreign policy, anti-terrorism, peace and security, economic growth, democracy and good governance. Now, as expected, world leaders and citizens have been reacting to the announcement of a Donald Trump victory. The president of the European Union Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, says there's hope that the EU and the U.S. will work together to promote the ideals they represent. The body promises a strong partnership between the U.S. and the EU, rooted in the values of freedom, human rights, democracy, and a belief in the market economy. And NATO chief Jan Schulkenberg also hopes to work with the U.S. president-elect in tackling security challenges. From congratulatory to fearful, world leaders and citizens in countries across the planet have expressed a wide range of opinions on the news that Donald Trump has been voted as U.S. next president-elect. In Moscow, 
President Vladimir Putin sending a congratulatory note saying he hopes they could get the U.S. and Russia relations out of crisis. As I have already said many times, it is not our fault that Russia-U.S. relations are in the state they are in now. But Russia is ready and wants to restore full-fledged relations with the United States. Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull sent in a congratulatory message to the new U.S. President-elect. On behalf of the Australian Government, I offer my congratulations to President-elect Donald Trump on his historic election victory, of which he has just spoken moments ago in New York. Throughout his campaign, Trump pledged to take the U.S. on a more isolationist America first path. His position raised the possibility of damaging relationships with America's most trusted allies in Europe, Asia and the Middle East. Although Trump vowed to renegotiate the Iran nuclear deal, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif is calling for U.S. President-elect to stick to the international agreement and stay committed to the multilateral nuclear deals. As far as the Islamic Republic of Iran is concerned, since Iran and the United States haven't had political relations, what is important is that the future U.S. President-elect is obliged to stay committed to this not bilateral, but multilateral nuclear deal. And in Berlin, where German Chancellor Angela Merkel's defense minister described the news as a huge shock. French President François Hollande also sent in his congratulatory messages, but warned that the results will open up a period of uncertainty. I congratulate him, as is natural between two democratic heads of state. I am thinking of Hillary Clinton, with whom I worked during the Obama presidency. This American election opens a period of uncertainty. I have to face it with a clear head and clarity. The presidency will be Trump's first elected office and remains to be seen how it will work with Americans and the rest of the world. It was neck and neck with Hillary Clinton, and now the bumpy U.S. election race is over. After surpassing all expectations, what do we know about the 45th president of the United States? In case you haven't heard, the new poll from Investors Business Daily, the most accurate poll for the last three presidential elections by far, has us up two points nationwide. We're leading, number one. Born June 14, 1946, Donald Trump is a businessman and a television producer. Trump was born and raised in New York City received a bachelor's degree in economics from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania in 1968. In 1971, he was given control of his father, Fred Trump's real estate and construction firm, and later renamed it the Trump Organization rising to public prominence shortly thereafter. As of 2016, he was listed by Forbes as the 324th wealthiest person in the world and 156th in the United States. In 2007, he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Politically, Trump sought the Reform Party presidential nomination in 2000, but withdrew before voting began. We are going to win the great state of Florida, and we are going to win the White House. Going to win it. At 70, he was nominee for the Republican Party. He defeated Mrs. Hillary Clinton in the general election on November 8, 2016, and was elected President of the United States. He holds the distinction as the oldest man ever elected to his first term as president, surpassing Ronald Reagan.
is married to Melania Trump, father of five and grandfather of seven. Historic day indeed it is. And in part two, after the break, more on the victory of Donald Trump as U.S. President-elect. We'll be joined from our Abuja studios by a foreign affairs experts to take a deeper look at the issues. That's in a moment. Do join us again.